Hello and welcome to Veg Around the World with me, Minakshi Garodia. In this show, we take one country from around the world and make a complete vegetarian meal, which my philosophy is simple recipes, authentic taste. And the food is going to be tasty, believe it or not. It's vegetarian and tasty. Today, the country we've chosen is France. And I know, when you think of French food, you really think of like beef or pate or, you know, things which really don't involve too many vegetables. But I actually have family in France and this food is quite good, quite simple to make and very tasty. The only thing which originally had some meat in it, but I'm making a vegetarian version, is French onion soup. So the four things we're going to, we're going to make four things today. One is avocado with balsamic vinegar. It's a simple dish, you've probably had it in places, but when it's served like this, it looks pretty and it looks really good. It tastes really good. And then we're going to have a tomato tart. Tomato tart, you know, in France, you have a lot of different tarts because that's one of the very staples of the food that people eat there. It's very tasty, very easy to make. Then you have French onion soup, which is typically made with beef, but we're going to make it with mushrooms, believe it or not and to end it off chocolate mousse now this is a lighter version of chocolate mousse and you you'd be surprised at how easy it is to make and yet how delicious it tastes so here we go now the first thing i do when i'm cooking french food is take a good bottle of white wine open it pour it out and take a sip it keeps company when i cook I always want to start with the dish that is the, takes the longest to make and in this case it's the French onion soup. Now in French onion soup obviously you need a lot of onions. So I've taken two onions around this size and you need to cut it really thin. So what I did was I pre-chopped it because it takes a long time to chop onions and frankly there's nothing fun about chopping onions. It's never going to be fun. The only thing you can do is hope your eyes don't water too much, put on some loud music, have fun with it and have some wine with it. To start off with, we put on, you should take a, you should take a pan which has a thick bottom because it's easy to burn. And this is an electric stove, but it doesn't matter what kind of stove you have. I put on the large burner on a pretty high heat and take some butter. Now, just because the food's vegetarian, I don't believe it should be I mean, it's good if it's healthy, there's nothing wrong with healthy food, but it should be tasty. It's much nicer to have tasty food than healthier food. You can do healthy too, but French onion soup's not it. Take a good blob, like half a stick of butter, and let it melt. Now there's something about melting butter, which is phenomenal, it's just such a great feeling. At the same time, you take another pan, you put it on, and in this, so French onion soup essentially has four ingredients. It has onions, it has a broth that you cook separately and add to the onions. It has a layer of toasted bread and of course the melted Gruyere cheese. So we've started, for the onions we've started the melting of the butter. Now I use two types of broth for the broth. You can actually make the broth at home but it's way too much work for me. And I love good food and I love tasty food, but I don't want to be like in the kitchen the whole time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one whole can of the mushroom broth. And it doesn't matter what you, which kind of broth you get, you can just get whatever you like, whatever your favorite brand is. Sometimes you can even use bouillon, vegetarian bouillon, which is basically like, it's like dried up soup cubes and sometimes that's a lot easier to carry with you and I know I will take maybe half of this I don't want to take too much but I don't want to take too little this is just regular vegetable broth because I'm substituting meat with mushrooms the other thing I'm going to add to this broth is dried shiitake mushrooms you can get dried mushrooms anywhere I got this at a local grocery store I normally use a lot of this because once you rehydrate them it tastes pretty good so take a good handful of it and we cook this till it comes to a boil meanwhile the butter seems to be melting nice and there's just something about butter it just feels so decadent and yummy 
And if you actually make French onion soup, this is something that will make your whole house smell extremely fragrant. Unless, of course, you dislike onions, then it won't be so fragrant. But then you wouldn't be making this soup. Um, once the butter sort of melted, you add all your onions to it. This is, again, two large onions, sliced very thin. Give it a good stir. And you know, this looks like a lot, and you'll probably be wondering, like, how can this broth fit in here? But it does. It works really well. So now that our French onion soup is well on its way, let's start with the, th uh, the tomato tart. Now the tomato tart, in France you have these fabulous tart sheets which are like, it's almost like, it's layer upon layer, it's almost like uh, phyllo, but it's, it doesn't puff like phyllo, it just stays a bit straight. Now we don't really get that in America. So you have two options, either you can use phyllo dough or you can use pie crust. Personally, I find phyllo dough a bit too flaky. It's not easy to pick up like a, you eat a tomato tart almost like you're eating pizza. So what I do is actually I just get a regular pie crust which is available in every grocery store and you just open it out. I like making this on a special crust, on a special kind of baking thing. You can use whatever you have really, it doesn't matter. And this dish is actually something that if you have the, pizza, uh, the pie base in your house, it will literally take you five minutes to make it. Five minutes. Um, this is a pizza baking tray. You just open out your dough in it. And try not to press it too hard so it doesn't stick like this. Now, you take a fork. Hmm, I'm sure I had a fork somewhere here. Here it is. And then you work out your whatever. If you're feeling angry with somebody, go for it. Deep. If you don't put holes in it, it puffs up. And there's no fun if it puffs up. It tastes much better like this. If you have some kids around, this is an easy task you can give them in the kitchen because they love helping out, but very often you don't feel, you wonder what it is that can be safe for them to do. You put your oven to heat at 350, I already did that. And then you drop your fork, I already did that. And then you put it right in. And you set your timer for eight minutes. You know, it depends upon your oven, how hot it is. I think eight minutes is good. Okay, great. Now that's done, that's done. The, and every time you pass the onions, give it a good stir. Now, for the onions in this, we're gonna caramelize it. So for that, we're going to add some sugar to it. We're going to, you take some sugar, you take a one teaspoon measure, and you put around three teaspoons. So one, two, and three. And of course, we work it in. This soup, actually the onions at the end of it, tastes so delicious and you know they don't typically feel like that onion where you get that raw feeling or you get like you know you're not being, it's very smelly. They're cooked so well and anyway if you've probably done this experiment in school, you take a piece of raw onion and you chew it and you chew it and it tastes sweet because of the change in the cell structure. But just adding a little bit of sugar right up front makes it work that much faster and it really tastes good. At the same time, I'm going to give this a little stir, Hope, waiting for it to come to a boil. The other thing we can do till then is cut the tomato. So the quality of the tomato, I think, matters in this recipe because we don't cook it much. So when you're not cooking something much, then the basic quality, I buy a wine ripened tomato, which is my favorite. 
I think I want to cut four. I might have some leftover, but I prefer going over than under in life generally. You cut them as thinly as you can. What are the things about chopping? You know, when I was saying onions is not fun. Well, with any chopping, I think the quality of your knife is really what makes a difference. For a long time, I had like reasonably decent knives. They weren't very sharp. But since I've got sharp knives, it's actually a pleasure to cut. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break and be right back. Okay, and I'm back. I just cut up three onion, um, tomatoes. I think that's enough. I'll just cut the other one if I need it. And let's oh, look at this onion now. It looks so good and it smells so good. I actually, I don't know if anybody's ever tried pizza with caramelized onions. It tastes pretty good. And let's give this a little stir too. Maybe I'll make it hotter. There's no reason it shouldn't be hotter by now. Now while we're waiting for these things, actually our, um, I'm gonna take a quick look at the pizza pie. Hmm, it looks good. It needs to cook a bit more. While that's happening, and we have nothing better to do, uh, let's start with the chocolate mousse. Now this chocolate mousse is really simple. We're gonna get our bowls. And I actually do multitasking when I'm cooking. I mean, if you want to make a full meal and you make one thing at a time, it'll take you a long time. So you just see when your hands free and you just start something new. Now, when you're making chocolate mousse, it's really important to make sure that all your dishes are thoroughly dry. There shouldn't be a single drop of water. And the reason for that is that we're gonna heat our chocolate in one of these dishes. And chocolate does not do well with water. You put chocolate with water and it seizes up. It becomes like this lumpy mass of chocolate, I guess. I mean, you could still eat it, but it's not gonna be any good for any mousse. So I use the Girardelli semi-sweet. You could use bittersweet, you could use milk. I personally don't like my chocolate mousse very sweet and I do like, I appreciate the dark flavor in it. And typically I'm gonna make enough for two people, like two big cups of mousse. I, I go by the measure of half a cup for, I mean, a quarter cup for one egg. And we're gonna use two eggs right now. So I'm going to use a half a cup. So that's like two quarter cups. And this we'll set aside. We're gonna be making, we're gonna be heating this actually in the microwave. Now this is a little trick of mine. You take chocolate and instead of using the double boiler which takes so much time, you heat it in the microwave. Now in the microwave, it's actually easy. The only thing you need to be careful about is you need to make sure it's not burning. You need to stir it occasionally. It's a little bit messier, but it saves you a good 15 minutes and a good two dishes. And let's crack our eggs. Now when you're cracking eggs, it's important to always crack in a separate bowl so that you're not, um, suppose you have a bad egg. You don't want that egg to affect the, all the other eggs you've broken. So, now this chocolate mousse actually contains raw eggs, which most mousses do. But as long as you buy your eggs from a safe place, a good, good quality egg or a pasteurized egg, it, you should be fine. You crack it open. I have this little cute little egg separator. You have to totally separate the whites out. You can't have any whites with the yolk. Oh great, I thought it's done. Okay, we're gonna put our yolks in the small one and our egg whites in the biggest one. You need a really big one because we're gonna beat the egg whites. Before breaking the other egg, I'm just gonna take my tomato tart out. Actually, I'm gonna take a look at it. Okay, that looks good. So this is semi-baked. Now, it's good to do this first. Hmm. Actually, it's not that well done. I need to heat it for maybe another three minutes. It should be almost done. So, bake. 
15, 15. Time off. Three. So, great. Let's break out the egg till then. So I've taken this French class in a French baking class and they made us separate the eggs with our hands. And it separated really well, but it felt really gross. I, I prefer this. Okay, we'll set this aside. Let's give our onions another stir. Oh, it looks good. And you can see the colors change. It's become this really, like when onions cook, they get this really nice pink taste, pink color to them. Freshly caramelized onion. Now I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. And now we're going to sort of make a little roux out of this. So roux is just a fancy word of saying like, like a white sauce. What we're going to do is add a quarter cup of flour to it. Just regular flour. And the mushrooms come to a boil too, because we're just gonna turn it off. This actually will form slightly crusty parts in the bottom and I personally love it when you get a mouthful with a little crunchy floury thing going there. So now we're going to let this cook a little bit. It's at a slightly lower heat now, but we're going to keep letting it cook because we want our onions cooked quite thoroughly. Now with this mushroom, what we're going to do is I have this little hand blender and I use it all the time for so many things, but I'm just gonna plug it in. And we're gonna put it right into the mixer and go for it. Be careful not to splatter yourself, I've done that a few times. does is instead of using just broth when we actually are um, when we actually okay I'm gonna let this stand here for a minute and pull out the tart I don't want it to overcook great I'm just gonna leave it here for a minute it adds body to your um, broth. If you're planning to make French onion soup, you could even consider putting the mushrooms in your broth and leaving it in your fridge or something overnight. That will make them really soft. check that the mushrooms have been blended and they have now give your onions another stir dig out all the crispy parts to add to your yummy soup and Can you just see the steam? This soup is so good. 
This is a seriously good tool. Just look at it. It looks phenomenal. We're going to add around one and a half teaspoon. Now the broth already has some salt in it, so you need to add salt to taste. Personally, in this quantity, in this recipe, I add just slightly more than one spoon of salt. And I add a good dash of pepper. Pepper really gives it that little kick. fresh ground pepper, you know, you get the slightly thicker pieces. There. So this soup is essentially done. We're just going to let it cook with your onions a bit. If you like a very soupy soup, which is very liquidy, you can make it liquidy. But I personally let it dry out a bit because I like my French onion soup a little bit thick. But again, that's personal preference, whatever you prefer. The same recipe. You add a little more broth, you take away a little more broth, your decision. But we're going to just let this cook at a low heat and we're going to concentrate on the tart now. Now the tart is very easy. So you can see this, see it's browning around the edges but the center part is still a bit white. And what you do is, now we take Dijon mustard in this. I just use whatever is in the grocery store. And you take a good two and a half tablespoons of mustard. And I know that sounds like a lot of mustard, but trust me, you can easily, it just disappears in this. Actually, I'm gonna just put two. But again, you can put more or less depending upon, you know, what's tasty for you. And just spread it out. It's always better to go with a little less and then if you feel like you're running out of mustard you can add a little bit more. So this is around two tablespoons but as you can see there's a big chunk missing so I'm just going to add a half tablespoon more. I like these squeeze bottles, it's so much easier. Normally, you know, very often you do these things by approximation. You make it like once, twice, third time you know exactly what, how much you want to put. And once your mustard has been put in, we decorate. Now another trick I learned for decorating is you always start with the best pieces on the outside and then you work your way in. Suppose you're decorating a tart, a cake or whatever. Now the other thing is because this is a very simple tart, it's okay if it overlaps a bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly, like don't keep them separate. Let it overlap, make sure every part has a little tomato in it. And again, slice them as thin as you can. Mm. So three large tomatoes was enough. And I'm back. So the only seasoning on this is gonna be a little bit of salt, obviously. And this is something if you like, if you want to try French food, this is something a lot of people use. It's called Herbs de Provence. Um, what this has is a combination of Basil, rosemary, tarragon, garlic, lavender. Who would think we eat lavender? Majoram, savory, thyme, and parsley. Now, if you, the way you get it normally, you don't get it with a grinder. And if you take a look at this, it's very thick. So what I do is I buy a separate grinder because I like it really finely ground. I just want a hint of all the flavors. And I'm gonna give it a good dash. And 
we put it back in the oven, we're all set. A lot of people actually like this tart with a little bit of cheese on it, and I'm a total cheeseaholic in French equals cheese, but this particular tart, it's the flavor of the uh, tomatoes, it tastes a very fresh dish. You have like the buttery, flaky crust underneath, and then you have this fresh, delicious tomato, which is not overcooked. We're just gonna cook it for maybe like five more minutes. It's a really good combination, it tastes very good. And you could add cheese if you wanted, but hey, I would just buy, make pizza in that case. So in the oven, bake. All right, five minutes more. I'm going to actually probably do six minutes. I like mine a little bit crispy and crunchy. Now let's give our onion soup a stir. There, can you see it's thick? I'm going to turn it off. This is done. All we need to do now is serve it up, put some toast on it. So I'm just going to let it cool down a bit. I've turned the heat off. I'm pushing up all the crusts, you know, the crunchy matter at the bottom, which is really tasty. And this thickness is good for me. Okay, I'm just going to clear up a little bit and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So our French onion soup's done. We're going to put, we're going to melt the cheese right at the end of it. I would want to concentrate on the mousse now. Actually, you should make your mousse maybe a couple of hours before your dinner because it's good to keep it in the fridge. It gives it a little consistency. I did make some and keep it in the fridge and I'll bring it out at the end. So for the mousse, the first thing we do is we're going to take the chocolate and we're going to melt it. The way you do it is you just put it in the microwave and you start it for a minute. So with my cuisine art, it's my cuisine art hand blender, I love it. It has these attachments and this is what really makes a mousse possible for me. I think chefs who used to make this mousse by hand a while back before the invention of these beautiful electrical things, hats off to them. I'm going to take a little spatula, stir it up a bit. You can see it's already melting. Hmm. This looks good. It smells really good. So as I said, the trick is you need to keep stirring it because sometimes the chocolate will melt, but it will, it can burn easily. So you need to make sure you give it a little Whisk. And the other thing we're going to need to do is chop some bread. Now I have a little way I do my French onion soup. I don't actually put my bowl inside. I'll show, show you the trick. It's, it makes cleanup easier for me. And you know, frankly, cleaning up is a big part of when you entertain and you want it to be not too difficult. This looks about done, almost done. Yeah, it's done. You know, chocolate chips are almost easier to melt because um, they have a higher surface area, so the heat penetrates better. There. 
The thing is you can't use this immediately because if you try to put raw egg into it, the egg will co cook. So what you do is you just leave it aside, let it cool. Meanwhile, let's work on our egg whites. This is just two egg whites and you won't believe how beautiful it becomes once you work on it. So you take any sort of whip and you work on it. This is really like magic, you know. You have like these two egg whites and it's going to become this beautiful mountain of egg white. This looks so pretty, it's like you're making snowflakes in a bowl when you're working on it. Oh, that's a beeper for the tomato tart. I'm just going to leave this here. Pull that out because you don't want it overcooked. Let me take a look. Hmm, I'm going to let it go for a little bit more. Three minutes more. So you need to whip it till it gets pretty hard because we're going to assimilate it, fold it into the other part and the stiffer this is, the fluffier your chocolate mousse is going to be. This is actually a lot of fun to do because, um, you know, it's really, you can see the actual creation, like it was a small thing and just by whipping it up it looks so beautiful. Okay, this is done. Now let's see how hot our chocolate is. Easy way to ch ch test it. Just dip your finger. Mmm, it's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bowl and we're going to take a little bit of the chocolate and mix it in. The reason I do this is the chocolate's hot while the eggs are cool, so if you take a little bit at a time, it won't cook the eggs. And the egg temperature will come up, a little bit like the frog in the water story, I hope you know that. If you put it slowly, the eggs won't feel it. And I'm going to add the rest of it back into the chocolate bowl. The fun part about doing this is clean up. This is the one time I love clean up because you get to lick all the chocolate off. And you give this a good stir. It doesn't matter if you use a heavy hand here. When you're mixing in the egg meringue, you need to have a light hand, but out here you can go for it. Don't forget to rub all the chocolate off the spatula. Okay, this is good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of the chocolate mousse, uh, the egg meringue. Okay. And we're going to pull this out first and leave it out. Great. It's ready. We're going to serve it up soon.
Now, the first one you mix in really well, the consistency, the first little blob. Can you see the color changing from that really dark chocolate to this? As soon as you add the yolks, you can see the texture change. It's just so delicious. This is such an easy mousse and it is so delicious. Now, we're gonna take a little bit at a time and fold it in. Folding is you literally take it, fold it, take it, fold it, take it, fold it, take it, fold it. Okay, I'm gonna stop saying that. You get it. You need to mix it in nicely so that you don't see the separate egg whites in it. But seriously, if you can get a really delicious chocolate mousse, this effort's worth it. And you don't feel so guilty because it's just like eating a piece of chocolate with some protein. You're putting protein in it. Eggs. And chocolate makes you happy. So that's a double whammy. Chocolate and protein together. Now, when you're serving chocolate mousse, I like to serve it in some glass that I have lying around, a martini glass, looks pretty cool, Sh champagne flutes, a shot glass, depends upon how much you want to serve. So what I'm using today is actually going to be, see, there it's done. Make sure you get all the chocolate off the spatula and fold it in, there, perfect. So what I'm going to do is get my glass, and spoon it in. You can actually serve this with, I normally serve it with raspberries or sometimes just by itself because it's just so delicious. And now you need to let it set for a little bit in the fridge. Even 15, 20 minutes is just fine. So I'm gonna go and do that and I'll be right back. I'm back. So, what we've done now is two of our four dishes are prepared. We have a beautiful onion, a uh, beautiful tomato tart. You can actually put zucchini, like roasted zucchini or whatever else you want. I'm just gonna slice this up. I use a pizza cutter. I find it easier. With pizza crust, it tends to get a little crumbly, but I don't mind, it's quite tasty. We're gonna take it and we're gonna serve it out on a plate. Actually, I'll serve it out later. We'll just leave this aside. Now, the next thing we're gonna work on is making the crust for the French onion toast, French onion soup. You take, um, you buy a sardo, a nice sardo. Um, Normally, if you look around you, there is going to be at least one really good bakery. Should go there. I'm going to take a thick chunk of it because I like it. You can even use old bread for this. It doesn't have to be like fresh bread. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my cup. You take the cup and it should be covered. So I'm going to cut two slices and cut off the sides so that it will fit inside later. This is just my way of doing it. It just makes it easier for me. There's no right or wrong way of doing this, as with most things in cooking. There. 
that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this. I, I use wax paper, so I'm going to put some put it on some wax paper. Brush it with olive oil on both sides. You could actually sometimes brush it with onions or you can make croutons with red wine, whatever you feel like. But the idea is to have some crunchy bread which is toasted. We're going to put this inside the oven on broil. So you broil it high. And you let it go for two minutes on each side. I always like to time our things. It just makes life easier. You don't have to, it takes the guesswork out of it or the memory out of it. Okay. Meanwhile, we're going to scoop up the soup. Mm. This soup is actually like a meal by itself. A good amount. You could of course take less if you wanted to. Again, a lot of these things are personal. I love a big dollop of it. And while we're waiting for the things. Mm. It's pretty good. The thing when you're broiling bread is you have to be very careful. There's a very thin line between just right and burnt. The other thing we need to cut up while we're waiting is the cheese. So this is just like a chunk of Gruyere you can get anywhere. I tend to buy really good quality cheese because, you know, normally you have like, not in this case, but you normally have like small chunks of cheese and it's good to have some really tasty ones. So you cut off the rind. This rind is not. I mean, you can eat it, but it's not the best rind to eat. Like with blue cheese or something. My favorite French cheese is something called memelette. It's this orange, really hard, stinky cheese. But it's very good. You slice a good chunk of cheese. There's nothing like too much cheese where French onion soup is concerned. It needs to be done a bit more. So, again, we're waiting. Sorry, nothing better to do. <laughs> cheese and bread. The French cheese is so good. Gruyere is actually Swiss, but typically French cheese is so good. You could just make a meal of it. And if you can find a place which has a good sourdough or baguette, it's amazing. What's really interesting is a lot of these places, you know, like when you have sourdough bread, the trick is the dough they use, the culture sometimes will go back like 100 years or 200 years. And I know that sounds a bit scary, but the strain of bacteria in your bread, it makes a very big difference to the taste. And good sourdough, like a good sourdough starter, people sell it for a lot of money because it's worth a lot of money. It's delicious. I'll be right back. And I'm back and we're going to check on the toast. Hmm, that looks nice. Flip it. We'll get the other side. I'm going to put a little brush of oil again. It should, you know, don't skimp on oil in this stage. Don't think that it's just fine. That little oil makes all the difference in the crunchiness and the taste of the toast. So 
So, my least favorite part about cooking is cleaning up, but I guess you have to because it's part of cooking. Um, the really good thing is that when you have a really delicious meal, you don't feel so bad about cleaning up. You should ideally clean up a little bit before you've eaten, so that after you're like feeling nice and full and relaxed, and then you don't have to finish it and get up and clean. <laughs> This oven's really hot now, so I'm keeping an eye on my toast. I think I want to take it out. So use wax paper. If you use parchment paper, it'll melt and it'll burn. And a lot of the other things, they don't work out so well. So what I'm going to do is I've sort of made it so that it's the same shape as this. And I've taken a good chunk of Gruyere and I'm just going to put it on top of it so that it melts nicely. I want to cover the edges. It's important to cover the edges for the looks, the look feel. So much about food is like, you know, how it looks, whether you feel like trying it. There. Now you put it back under the broiler and you let it cook till the cheese is bubbly and brown and melty and delicious. Let me just serve up the tart till then. Oops, here it goes. Here's your tart. Now the one thing which we haven't really dealt with yet is the avocado. Avocado is a very interesting, I guess, is it a fruit, is it a vegetable? Good question, um, but it's delicious. Getting avocado to be the right thick ripeness is the most important thing about avocado. An avocado, when you touch it, it should feel, it should just have a little bit of gift to it. If it's hard, it won't work. Now the trick behind an avocado, you really know whether it's ripe or not, is unfortunately when you're cutting it. It's not always, it might be overripe, but when you're cutting it, it should cut like butter, like as if it's as smooth as butter. See, this one's just perfect. And it should pull apart easily. There, look at it. How gorgeous is that? A friend taught me a really cool trick to take the seed out. You sort of poke your seed and you flip it out. Easy. What you do with this avocado for the dish is we'll keep it ready, but we won't serve it up yet. I always give it a separate dish by itself because sometimes the balsamic vinegar moves about and I don't really like that. Mmm, the cheese is melty, but it's not fully melted. It's not brown yet. It has to be brown, almost burnt. when my patience is not that bad because I know I'm waiting for something really good. So. Not melted yet. Still waiting. It's on high broil. There's nothing you can do beyond that. You can have wine. Let me finish making the avocado. What you do is you take some good quality balsamic vinegar. You'd be surprised, different balsamic vinegars can taste really different. I personally love it. I can have like it by the quarter cupfuls. And you, in your avocado, which is in its skin, you just pour it in, a good dollop. Look at how pretty this looks. This looks really pretty. That's what, you have to be a little bit careful once you've served it because it can, if you swish around, and you put a dash of salt on it. And that's it, that's your appetizer. It's as easy as that, it's so yummy. You just scoop it up with a spoon and it's really good. Mm, it's melty, but it's not 
all over. You could actually have done that once the toast was ready. You could put it on the soup, put the cheese on top. What they I normally do in restaurants is they let the cheese sort of hang off and sort of form a covering. But I personally find it very difficult to clean up the edges of my soup bowl and it's just too much work for me. So I do it this way, then I'll just scoop it on top. But it's still not, it's melty, but it's not bubbly. It has to be like bubbly. We're waiting for that. I'm going to go and come right back. I'll check on the chocolate mousse for you. And I'm back with the chocolate mousse, which looks just perfect. I'm pretty sure the cheese is done by now. Yes, it is. Can you see this? It's nice and melty. And we're just going to scoop it right up on our... Be careful, by now these, this is so hot you don't want to burn yourself. And you take the rest of the cheese, you scoop it up, all the melty cheese and you pour it on top. You don't want to miss out on any of this cheese. Voila, your perfect French meal. You could you have your soup, your French onion soup, which is delicious. It's a meal by itself. You have your appetizer, which is nice, green, fresh. You have a tomato tart, which was so easy and so delicious, and some chocolate mousse. Bon appetit.